So if you want to do well in algebra, you must know how to find the equations of lines or find linear equations. So here is a simple practice problem. Let's take a look at it. So we want to find the equation of a line, and all we know about this line is that its slope is 1 half, and this line passes through the xy coordinate 3, 5. All right, now we want to find the equation or the linear equation of this line that fits this description, and we want to express this uh, equation in y equals mx plus b form. This is the most common way to uh, write linear equations. There are other ways, but this is the most common way. So y equals mx plus b form is what we call slope-intercept form. Okay, so if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through and show you exactly how to solve this problem. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I've been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have this line. It has a slope of 1 half and passes through the coordinate 3, 5. So what is the equation of this line, i.e., what is the linear equation given this information? And again, we want to express it in y equals mx plus b form. So a good way to start this problem is to think of it graphically. So here we have a point that's on a line, and all we know is the slope. So let's just kind of think about this on an xy plane. Now, 3, 5 is an xy ordered pair, right? So we could plot this point on the xy plane. So 3 would be right here on x, and y would be right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this, uh, this is just a rough sketch. So let's say that this is the point 3, 5 on the xy plane. Now, what we have is a line that has a slope of 1 half. So let's just talk about slope real quick. So this is a positive value, right? It's a fraction, but it is a positive fraction. So on the xy plane, any lines that increase from left to right have a positive slope. And if a line is decreasing from left to right like this, it has a negative slope. Now, another thing that you need to understand is that lines that are steeper in a positive direction have a greater value for its slope. So maybe a line like this could have a slope of, let's say, like 5, where a line like this that's barely increasing may have a slope of like 1 fifth. Okay, so these are really important concepts to understand. Now, there's two other things that I want to bring up about slope before we get into this problem. And that is a line that is perfectly horizontal has a slope of what? Well, hopefully you said it has a slope of zero, and that would be correct. And a vertical line has a slope of what? Well, if you said, hey, I'm not quite sure, Mr. D2 Math Man, well, that's a good response because the answer is undefined, right? So we can't define a line that has a vertical slope. All right, so just a quick review about slope. So what we have here is a line of, uh, that has a slope of 1 half and passes through this point 3, 5 on the xy plane. All right, so let me go ahead and just erase all this right now. And let's just kind of think about this particular equation or this particular line graphically. All right, so again, this line is going to pass through the xy uh, order pair 3, 5 and it has a slope of 1 half. So maybe it kind of has a, a steepness like this. So what we're talking about is a linear equation like so. And what we're trying to do here is find the specific equation expressed in y equals mx plus b form. So this is again called the slope-intercept form. Now the slope is this right here. So we already know that in this equation, m is going to be 1 half. So this is the easy part in order to solve this problem. And what we need is this b, okay? And again, this is the slope intercept. And this b is talking about the y-intercept. And that is this point right here, the point where this line crosses the y-axis. So if we have this point 
and we already have the slope, well, we'll be able to solve the problem and write this line in its uh, linear equation form, y equals mx plus b. So if we have the y-intercept and we already have the slope, well, then we'll be able to express this line in y equals mx plus b form. Now, there's other ways to write an equation of a line like standard form, but uh, again, y equals mx plus b form is the most common way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the algebra on how to solve this problem. So the way we want to do this is to write our y equals mx plus b equation right here and take a look at the information and see what we have. Now, again, we already know the slope. It's 1 half, so we can replace this m with 1 half. So that brings our equation to y equals, I'll actually make this color-coded, 1 half x plus b. Okay, so all we need is b, and then we will have solved the problem. So how can we get this value b, this y-intercept? Well, we're trying to solve for the variable b, but we also have the variables y and x. So what can we do? Well, luckily, we have a point right here, an xy point that's on this line. And we know that 3 is x, and the y value of this coordinate is 5. So when x is 3, y is 5. So what we can do is actually plug in this 3 for this x and 5 for this y, and then solve for b. So that's exactly how you find the y-intercept when you have the slope and you have one point that's on the line. Okay, so once again, we have an x and a y, and all we need to do is solve for b. So let me go ahead and erase this here, and hopefully you understand what's going on. Again, we have an xy ordered pair. So we have x, we have y. In other words, we can plug these values in here for y and x and solve for b. So once we have b, we have all the information we need to write this line in y equals mx plus b form or slope intercept form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And again, this algebra is not that difficult. You just have to make sure that you're plugging in the correct information. So let's focus in here on y and replace this y with what? Well, we have to go back up here to our coordinate. So we're going to replace this y with 5 and replace this x with 3. All right, so we've got to be really careful here not to confuse these points. So what we're going to have here is, I'll go ahead and write this, 5 is equal to 1 half x. Now x is going to be what? That is going to be 3. Now anytime you are replacing values or plugging in numbers into variables, you always want to use parentheses. All right, so here we only have the variable y, so we can just simply plug a 5 there. But right here we have 1 half times x, so always use parentheses and we'll plug in a 3 right there. Okay, so that is going to give us 1 half times 3 plus the variable b. So now all we have to do is use some basic algebra to solve for b. And there's a few different ways you can do this, but uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take care of this uh, fraction multiplication right here. So we're going to end up with 5 is equal to 3 halves, right? So what's going on here is 1 times 3. Well, let's just kind of so I'll back up and make sure everybody understands how to multiply a fraction. So this is 1 half times 3, or 3 over 1. So here we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we have 3 halves. All right, so 5 is equal to 3 halves plus b. So what can we do here? Well, there's a few different choices we can make in order to solve this problem. Now, we have an improper fraction here. We want to solve for b. So what we really need to do is subtract 3 halves from both sides of the equation. Okay, so we can write it this way. Now, there's other things that I would do to make this problem easier, but I just want to make sure you understand the basic algebra, right? So if we subtract 3 halves from both sides of the equation, we will have solved for b. So b, let me go ahead and write it this way, is going to be equal to 5 minus 3 halves. Okay, so at this point, we can actually uh, do all the fraction work to get the answer. Now, that's one approach to get b. And then, of course, when we have b, we could plug it back into y equals mx plus b and have our final answer. 
But another thing that we could do here is simply clear the fractions, right? Really, it depends on, you know, your comfort level with fractions and your ability to solve basic equations. But let's go ahead and just kind of proceed this way. So we have 5 minus 3 halves. So this is 5 over 1. So we need a common denominator of 2. So we're going to have to multiply uh, both the numerator and denominator by 2. So we're going to end up with 10 over 2 minus 3 halves. Okay, so I know I'm spending a lot of time explaining these uh, fractions, but this is typically where students go wrong, right? They kind of go through, or they understand the procedure, but they go through the math, all the arithmetic very quickly, and then, of course, they make mistakes. So uh, we have a LCD of 2, so how do we do this? Well, all we have to do is subtract the numerator. So 10 minus 3 is 7, so this is going to be 7 over 2. All right, so B is equal to 7 halves. And it's perfectly fine to leave your uh, value as an improper fraction. You don't have to turn this into a mixed number. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we can solve the problem. So remember, we want to write this equation in terms of Y equals MX plus B. And we already know that the slope is 1 half. So we are looking for this B value. And now we have it. So let's go ahead and put this all together and write the final equation. So I'll write uh, y equals mx plus b, just so you uh, you remember the form of this uh, line or this linear equation. Again, this is called slope-intercept form. We know the slope, it's 1 half. And now we know the y-intercept, it is 7 halves. Okay, so let's go ahead and just plug in the information and we will be done. So our final answer is going to be y is equal to 1 half x plus 7 halves. Okay, so again, this is a critical skill for all of you out there that are studying any sort of algebra. So I'm talking about courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2. It doesn't make a difference. Linear equations is critically important not only in algebra, but uh, courses like statistics, okay? If you ever heard of anything called linear regression, we're talking about linear equations. In other words, if you have a bunch of data and you're plotting data and it kind of looks like this and you want to kind of find or a, a linear equation or a line that best fits this pattern, well, this is called linear equation or linear regression, excuse me. And what we're doing is finding the equations of lines. And again, probably one of the most common ways to express those equations is the slope-intercept form. Now, if you need help with algebra, any level of algebra or test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.